today with Louis Chakart who's our modern workspace specialist. Um, his difficult job at the moment is assisting clients with remote workers. With the current COVID-19 situation and the outbreak and the panic that's going on at the moment, clients are asking us a lot of questions, uh, especially our international clients who have already implemented remote working. And they want to know how they can get their workforce safe, away from the office environment, away from the um, risk of spread of the disease, and yet still productive and still working efficiently in a home environment. So anyway, let's jump straight into question number one. Mm. How do we start and what tools do we use? I think we need to identify the environment. So in order to work successfully remotely, you've got to have connectivity. So if your users have ADSL, 3G or 5 at home, that should be sufficient. Secondly, as a reliable machine, um, even if they don't have a reliable machine or they, they're worried about the machine, we have an RMS division that, that can do remote support, so you need a, a machine to do the remote work. And then thirdly, as probably the tools that, that you have already as a company. So you already have Office 365 or Microsoft 365, and in this product stack, all the tools you need to work successfully remotely um, is based. Okay, great. Once we have our remote user set up at home with a functioning PC and internet access, um, how does he access his data and his apps from a home environment? Okay. So with Office 365, you can access the, the app launcher or the launch, pay, launch page from pretty much anywhere in the world. So you'll open up a web browser, you go to office.com, they will, ask to be, they will be asked to sign in. They sign in with their user and password, same as what they, they do on their work machine. Once they've signed in, they will have access to all the web applications that Microsoft makes available through the Office 365 suite. So you'll have access to your mail, Outlook. You'll have access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint. You'll have access to OneDrive, so you can access your files and get to your files to work remotely. And you will also have uh, Teams available, so you'll be able to to download Teams and install it, uh, and then be able to do meetings. And if the need arises, they can also install the Office applications from this dashboard. If users haven't taken a work laptop home with them, for whatever reason they've been compromised and they haven't been able to fetch their laptop, and they have a home PC at home, mm -hmm. how do they go about starting up? How do they install Office? Okay, so the beauty of the way Microsoft has structured the licensing, is that they now license users instead of PCs. So with licensing a user, you're allowed to install Office on five PC devices, five small screen devices, and five large screen devices like iPads and the, the S-Tabs, etc. So what the user will have to do is go to the dashboard, log into the website, go to office.com, go to the dashboard. In the top right hand corner, there will be a, a icon that says install Office. They click on this icon, and this will then uh, um, kick off the installation process. Once it's installed Office, they will have to sign in with the same credentials and this will activate Office. And this will give them access to the entire Office suite on their home or their own device. Brilliant. So once we are now set up, we've got our home PC, we've got Office installed, are we good to go? Is Teams there? Can we jump straight in and begin using it? So when you install the Office package, it's got Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook Publisher uh, Access uh, and Outlook the like, but it doesn't have the Teams application. So the Teams application to get this installed on the machine is you'll have to go again to the, the app launcher, office.com, you'll then go to the web app Teams. When you click on the web app in Teams, it'll open up another tab and it'll actually realize or know that you don't have Teams installed in your on your PC and it will ask you, do you want to download and install the Teams application? All you have to do is click yes, go through the prompts. Once it's installed, it will come up with a login screen. You will log in again with the username and password and you'll have full access to the Teams workspace. 
unloaded office, we've installed teams, mm -hmm. we are good to go. How do we begin communicating one-on-one -on -one with our colleagues that we are now removed from? Yeah, so the beauty of Teams is, is that it's a collaboration space um, where I can access all my data and I can also have one-on-one -on -one conversations with my staff and team conversations. I think that team conversations we'll discuss in a later question, but for one-on-one -on -one conversation is as simple as typing the person's name in the search bar, okay, when their name pops up, hit enter and it'll open up a chat space. In this chat space we can do one of three things. We can have I am messages like you all like WhatsApp. Um, we could have voice calls, so voice calls, and we can have video calls with our colleagues. Okay, so those are the three communicating options. The, also, the beauty of Teams is, is that the chat is persistent. What I mean by this is, is that everything that we type in with the I am message stays in the history. So we can always go back and reference the conversations back. As well in the one-on-one -on -one conversations, I can also share files that we can open in Teams and co-author and work together. So we don't have to be in the same space to work. We just have to be in Teams and we can co-author documents one-on-one -on -one while we're having a conversation uh, via voice or video call. Okay, so we've spoken about how to work one-on-one -on -one with your colleague, co-authoring a document, all of that. What happens if we need to work as a team where there's three, four people and we need to have a, a bit of a mini meeting? Okay, cool, yeah. So Teams, as the name says, is a collaboration workspace for a group of people that can work together. So I can set up teams for different departments like HR, finance, sales, etc. And we'll have a group of people that will be part of this team. In this team, we can share documents. So you'll have a file space where to upload documents to. We'll have a channel type scenario where we can uh, segregate between topics in the team. So for instance, in HR, we could have uh, salaries, we could have new hires, we could do interviews, use onboarding, so we can segregate the topics. And there's also a functionality where you can, by clicking one button, it actually dials everybody in the team into a meeting. So I could have a team voice and video meeting and also record this meeting so not necessary we don't have to be in the office so we can click the button it opens up a impromptu meeting and it dials everybody into this meeting so working together with your colleagues in the team is just really really simple We've discussed how to manage meetings within our organization how to set up an impromptu meeting dial people in but we all know that meetings don't only happen within our organization. How do we handle client meetings with people outside our organization? How do we bring them in and how do we manage those meetings? Please? Good question. So the beauty about Office 365 is that it's integrated. So if Teams calendar links up to my Outlook calendar. So if I set up a meeting in my Outlook calendar, I can select it via Teams meeting. And then the external people that are added to this meeting will then be invited to this Teams meeting as well. The added advantage of Teams is that you don't need a client installed on your machine as a guest in a meeting. Um, they can join the meeting via a web browser as a guest user. And also Teams is available for a free download uh, if the user would like to do so. So um, in summary is you can add the meeting in your Outlook calendar, invite guests, share the link with them, and they can join the meeting in, and then the same principles apply. I can record the meeting, I can have meeting notes for, for taking the agenda down, or the, the, the minutes down, and I can also have live captions. Um, so there are many features that I can use in the meeting itself to communicate for with inside and externally to our organization. Probably the most significant question at the moment that is going to come from the management of organizations is how do we manage uh, the remote workers in this situation so that we make sure that they are still being um, effective and working efficiently? Cool, yeah, so again that is a fear from management is that what if people take advantage of being able to work from home? Will they work? Won't they work? You know, what is their work ethic like? And, and instead of causing a witch hunt, uh, you can use the built-in tools in Office 365 and the admin center, because uh, remember Office 365, everything gets locked. So if I send a mail, if I type a message, if I have a call, everything gets locked in the activity log of Office 365. 
so we can give access to, to, to managers to be able to monitor uh, their teams that are working remotely and see if they've actually been doing what they say they've been doing. Again, it's not supposed to be a stick, but it is there um, as a measure if you need to investigate uh, um, remote work. My personal experience is uh, people working remotely actually work a little bit harder because they think they are being watched or they have a fear that they, they're going to be caught out. Um, but if you feel the need to monitor your users, there are definitely ways to do so. Thanks Louis for sharing your insight with us over this time. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed your time with us and if you are interested there are some links below to videos on the Microsoft site that will demonstrate everything we've been talking about and more. Thanks for joining us.